Where, where'd, where'd you grow up, John? Uh, Lake Worth, Florida. Which is south? It's south, south Florida. Yeah. So I had 40 minutes north of Miami. Mm-hmm. I split the time there in uh, Alapato, which is downtown Miami. I spent half the time there with my dad. So Tell me about your parents. Uh, my mom, out of high school, she went to work for Larry Flint. Uh, that's the Hustler Magazine guy, for those of you who don't oh, know who that is. Uh, she, she first started out as his personal barber because that's what she went to school, like trade school or whatever. Uh, and then I don't really know the ins and outs of their, how their re- relationship evolved, uh, whether it was strictly platonic or not. I don't, I don't really know. I never asked. I, I don't really care. But uh, she turned into quite a partier from what other people have told me. And then Larry Flint rented a mansion down on Palm Beach. That's how my mom ended up in Florida. She, uh, she became the head mistress or the head like house lady that all the models would come in from all over the place and she would make sure that they followed the dress code which was if you come outside your room you got to be naked so and she had to adhere to those rules too all the women that was Larry Flint's thing all the women walk around naked in front of him that's just his thing uh my dad my dad's a Cuban immigrant he's a dick and uh, probably one of the coolest people I ever knew. Uh, he died last February. I didn't never get to say goodbye or nothing. Uh, little unresolved issues, I guess. What was your childhood like? Shitty. Uh, bounce here, bounce there. Uh, primarily, I grew up like on the south side of Lake Worth, which is predominantly black and Haitian. I mean, they're both black uh, people, but so I speak a little Creole. Uh, you know, I, I joined the gang when I was 11 years old. Well, I, I, I started to join the gang and at 12, as my initiation, I had to put in work, if you can read between the lines. Right before my 12th birthday, uh, the gang that I was attempting to become a part of his Latin Kings, uh, which is actually on the up and up as an organization for the most part. However, just like any other organization, you've got bad apples within that group and they create a snowball effect of other bad people in the group. So that nowadays it's all bad. There is no more respect, honor, loyalty. These are you know, the mottos that we live by. However, things change. Um, I started using drugs on a regular basis, smoking pot, drinking. Specifically, uh, St. Ives Special Brew was my thing. And I used to get drunk as hell when I was probably like 12, 13 years old and go out and either fight or, you know, I had a little 380, I'd go out and shoot people's tires out in the neighborhood. I was just a bad kid, you know, like not really bad. I was just bored and I had bad influences. So it became so easy to just be a shithead, you know? And uh, like I said, I, I'm, I kind of keep avoiding this right before my 12th birthday. <laughs> these guys, my brothers, send me to go do what I'm supposed to do in order to become a full-fledged member of the Latin Kings. And that was to take somebody's life. I still, that's over 30 years ago. And I still, well, it's right at 30 years. And I still struggle with that shit. I still have nightmares about it. It's not the fact that the guy died or that I killed him. That doesn't really bother me so much, as much as it does like his family, like, I snatched his, I basically killed his family too because they're never gonna be the same. They're always gonna be damaged from that one incident. You know, and that's not the only time. I mean, I've fucking hurt so many people, both emotionally, physically, and I've been hurt, fuck. I've been shot seven times, stabbed, 
beat with a baseball bat, ran over, all kinds of shit. And I just keep coming back for more. I'm a glutton for punishment. As far as the drugs concerned, by the time I was 14, I was doing an eight ball a day of cocaine. Uh, I started to like, dabble into the pills, Oxycontins and stuff, and Xanax. And before long, I was hooked on that and the coke. So I'm doing, I started shooting it by the time I'm 15. And I'm 39, gonna be 40 in a couple months. And I still love shooting cocaine and heroin. However, there's not much heroin anymore. Now it's all fentanyl. And you're lucky if you don't die when you do that shit. So it's a fine line. You what know? are you using now? No, I'm not presently using opiates, but uh, I'm not beyond getting high on some, some coke or crack or whatever, you know? Crack is just easier to get. And you, I, I prefer to slam it, which means to shoot it. Uh, so really, when you get the crack, you're eliminating what makes it crack by putting a, a citric acid like vinegar or orange juice or anything with citric acid and it. it breaks the baking soda down. Like the volcano project when you're in elementary school, you put a baking soda and then pour vinegar and it makes the volcano erupt. It's just a chemical reaction. So it gets rid of that and that's how I do it. Johnny Cash said it best, hear that train a coming, rolling around the bend. Oof. It's in such an intense feeling that I just can't even, I can't describe it. And surely you can see like that excites me and that's so sick to me. Like part of me is like, damn, what the fuck's wrong with you? And the other part is like, you know what? Fuck it, who cares? Nobody, fuck, I don't got nobody. Ain't nobody calling and checking up on me. Nobody gives a fuck, you know what I'm saying? And then it, it helps you numb the, the fuck, mental. It helps you numb everything. Yeah, the, the memory of what you did when you were younger. Oh, dude, I, when I was younger, when I started going to prison. How many years did you do in prison? Uh, well, when I, when I killed that guy, when I was 12, they, uh, they figured out some way, the fucking attorneys figured out some way to get me off. Like with some, I had to do a level eight program, which was like a year. Uh, I only ended up doing like seven months and I escaped from there. Like I ran, I was in Pahokee, Florida, which is all sugar cane. So by the time I got to a road in some civilization, I was so cut up and bleeding everywhere that I was literally losing blood. I, I probably would have died if I wouldn't have like flagged somebody down. I was bleeding that bad. I had some like sugarcane sharp, the leaves are. And I, I had th thorns, all glass in my feet. I was all fucked up. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to recall all this stuff and, and, and sit here and not get emotional about it. I mean, uh, that's a, I really hadn't thought about that, that dude in so long. You know, I, how'd you, how'd you kill him? I shot him in the face, closed casket, made sure of it. That was the requirement. And, uh, and did you do anything to bring that on? Well, he, he did. Yeah. I mean, this was, this was a hit, you know, like, he did something with, I really to this day don't know all the details. I didn't want to know all the details. I just wanted to do my part and be done with it and be, be a part of something, have a family. And that's what being a king offered me. You so, know? so your family was where? <sighs> Fuck, my mom and dad dropped me off when I was like four years old at this dude named Joe Farinelli's house. It was my, one of my dad's coworkers. My dad was an iron worker slash concrete slash whatever the fuck he do for work to get paid cash so he could get high every day, you know? Uh, but, uh. So they dropped the parents, your parents yeah, dropped you dropped off. Yeah, they dropped me off at Joe's house, man. And they didn't fucking never come back. I mean, who the fuck does that? I got kids, I got five fucking kids. And I don't give a fuck. I may have abandoned them by going to jail, but I didn't take her, their mom with me. You know what I'm saying? Like. I've been fortunate I picked good mothers for the kids. I'm the fucked up one. But I make every effort that I can to see my children when I can. 
uh, was just released from prison literally two weeks ago. I got out Monday, March 7th. I got out of Gulf Correctional, and, which is in the Panhandle of Florida. It's a level seven institution, maximum security. And uh, you I your that, was, that was on the seventh. Yeah. On the eighth, I was on a plane here. I, I got out 5 a.m. Monday, 10 p.m. Tuesday, I was here. Do you ever see your parents ever again? I see, I talked to my mom a little bit. My dad's dead. He died February 17th last year. And uh, I mean, I can't say, I can't say like I'm upset about it. I guess I'm not happy about it either. Uh, a lot of my resentments and uh, things that I suppress or hold inside that probably are the tr the things that cause me to keep using because God knows I'm fucking sick of this shit. I love the feeling, but I don't like the consequences that come with it. Were you using in prison? I mean, yeah, I, we sell a lot of drugs in prison. So in the bylaws, or in other words for us, in the commandments of our, of our nation, we're not supposed to use drugs other than if you want to smoke some weed or drink a little bit. You're not allowed to get fucked up though. It's, that's a rule and you will get, you will get violated or worse, something could really bad could happen to you if the wrong people were to view it and say, oh, well, man, fuck this dude. He's been in trouble, what, four or five times with us? Go ahead and fucking whack him. And you never see it coming. You know, it'll be your best fucking friend come and stab, slit your throat or some shit. So it's a constant battle, like walking on eggshells constantly, the politics, the bullshit, and I'm a high ranking member of that nation. I'm probably like in the, if I was in the army, I'd be the equivalent of like a general or something. So when you say that nation, you're not talking the Latin Kings. I am talking Latin. You are. Yeah, hundred percent. Latin maybe. King and Queen. Well, almighty Latin King and Queen nation is the true full name. But I mean, there's positives involved in it. It wasn't designed to be a street gang. It was designed to fight fucked up people who would come into our neighborhoods as Latino as Latinos and just beat us for no reason, fucking uh, come going through people's houses, stealing their money. Like the cops were nasty in Chicago back in the, the 40s and 50s and 60s. So come in late 60s, early 70s, some brothers got together and they were not black brothers, but some, some of my brothers got together in Humboldt Park and we formed the almighty Latin King nation. And the queen part, that comes later, you know, grow and develop. Uh, so you're, you're half Cuban. Yeah, my dad's, my dad's Cuban, my mom's Irish. Is, is that a requirement to be? In yeah, Latin? you have to have, you have to be, at the very least, Italian. Um, but you can be mixed. However, I don't recommend it. So whoever's watching this, don't fucking think that if you're a half breed, you can go join these people and they're gonna embrace you with open arms. It's quite the opposite. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, I went above and beyond. I was a vicious, just mean, nasty person because I knew I had to be, but it was all an act. It was all a facade. You know, I, I put up a fucking game face. You know, like you see the football players, they got that fucking unit on their face. They're always, they're serious when they're on that field. Well, I had to be serious out there. Carry a gun everywhere I go. I still, right now, I carry a gun. You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what are you, your prison time that you just got out for? What was that? What were you in for? Uh, well, aggravated battery. And the fucked up thing is, is aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. And I didn't have a weapon. They say that my hands, because of my martial arts stuff, they say that I'm, my hands are deadly weapons. So unfortunately, if I punch somebody, it's, it's a felony, no matter what. Uh, I had that and Possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. That was my fourth offense with that same charge. And they gave me 20 years for that. 
Uh, I did get not five years knocked off. And I did 85 months. 85 fucking months. And I've been out close to three weeks. It's fucking, it's crazy out here. I'm fucking crazy. I, I think, I think that uh, this last time really fucked my head up really good. Like it, it, 15 years tore me up. It was like it ripped my fucking soul out of my body. I just didn't care about nothing or nobody in there. Thank God I got out when I did because I was saying I was fucking borderline ready to hang myself, you know? I, fuck. I still think about it all the time because it's easy to just give up, you know? Who's gonna miss me? Nobody. I couldn't hang myself. That was just an example. I'd, I'd have to fucking swallow my gun, you know? I, I just know I, I couldn't hang myself or slip my wrist or nothing. I couldn't do that. But I will say this, and uh, I can take it to the fucking bank. I don't carry a gun because I'm serious about fucking people up out here. I carry a gun for when the day comes where the police are gonna come to me and I know I'm gonna go to jail. At that moment, I'm just gonna pop off on the police. I'm not trying to kill them. I just want them to kill me. Suicide by a cop, they call it. You know? Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But if it does, court will be in session in the streets. I'm not, I'm not going back to prison. Never again will I have a dude tell me to squat and cough and spread my fucking ass cheeks. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fucked up place. I could, I've seen so much crazy shit happen in prison. It's, oh, it's just terrible. Dude's fighting and guy fucking grabs another dude's nuts and literally ripped his fucking nuts off with no, like, just snatched them. And his whole sack came off. That was just, a, that was just one incident. Like, it's fucking retarded shit. And then you got these, you got the chungos, the blacks, you got the fucking Hispanics and the whites. I fucking hate that tri fucking fact of separation and, and I'm better than them because of this and I'm better than them because of this. And, and it's not just the white people who act like that. The fucking blacks and the Spanish are just as guilty, if not more, because they feel like they, they, they deserve to get some get backs on the whites. Well, I didn't have no fucking slaves. I wasn't even around when the fucking Rosa Parks rode the bus and shit. I don't give a fuck what color you are. The only thing I care about is green. And if it's cash, you could be whatever gang you want to be. You could fucking, as long as you're not a kitty fucker, that's one thing I will not tolerate. Other than that, I don't give a damn about any personal, or any person on an individual basis, because I'm not trying to make any friends. I don't have none. Uh, I got a few acquaintances that I talk to, and that's usually only because my first night out here, I fucking, two dudes tried to jump me and I beat both of them's ass right in the middle of San Pedro in front of probably 200 people. So now when I walk up the sidewalk, motherfucker gets out of my way. I'm not a bully, I hate bullies, but I will, I demand respect, period. And that's from anybody. Respect's due to a dog. Everything, every living thing is due respect. And these fucking people up here in Los Angeles, Skid Row, downtown, whatever, are the fucking scum of the earth, dude. I hate that I landed here. But I came out here for work. I start my job Monday. Fuck. Who knows how long it'll last? Who knows if I can stay off the needle? I mean, I don't fucking know. Sitting here listening to me, I probably sound like a fucking nutcase, but hell, I am a nutcase. <laughs> Certified, I get, uh, I get, I sh could, should be taking psych meds, but fuck that. That shit makes you wackier than you already are. I'm the way I am, and that's just it. God doesn't give a damn. He made me like this, or so they say. So if he can accept me, I definitely accept me. I'm, I'm okay with myself. All the other shit is irrelevant. I wish I could live like that. I wish I could hold on to that, what I just said, and live every moment like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. But I got a short fuse. I don't even know if I have a fuse. I think it's just like you light it and then it just goes boom, you know, immediately. Uh, and it happens way too often. Guy beat, beating on a fucking woman the other day and 
in broad daylight. All these fucking dudes are just watching this shit. I really seriously wanted to fuck. The dude who's hitting the woman, yeah, you're fucked up. But what's even more fucked up is all these dudes, they're so-called tough guys. They're standing there fucking watching this shit and, and uh, laughing and shit. Like, what the fuck kind of human being laughs at somebody else's despair? This lady's so fucking terrified of this dude that she can't leave him because she just knows he's going to kill her, which who knows what he'll do. But I think she's far safer. She got the fuck from around there. Take some of She works. Take your fucking paycheck and get on the bus or train or something. I tried to tell her that. And uh, I don't know, man. It's just this world has gone to shit. And I'm the cause of some of it. I'm guiltier than most. What, what emotions do you go through mostly? <sighs> now that you're out, especially. Well, I can't say any one particular emotion overrides any other one or is more, uh, more occurs more. Uh, because it's kind of like one, one emotion will trigger another and, you know, and it's all almost simultaneously that it happens. So it's hard to pinpoint. You got anger, you got depression. You oh got... my God, do I have anger? Anxiety. And it could be something so petty. Like, we could be playing spades and you don't bid your hand right. I'm liable to cuss you the fuck out. You know, we're partners and shit. I'm, I'm doing it because I want us to win, but I go about it the wrong way. Are you, are you institutionalized now? Fuck yeah. Dude, I still, when I get up, like I, I stayed the night, not last night, but I stayed the night uh, two nights ago at this, this kid's house that goes to the clinic. I go to methadone clinic. That's how I'm managing to stay off the needle right now, to be honest with you. Uh, 150, 150 milligrams of more of uh, fuck my head, methadone. Doesn't get you high, it just kind of mellows you out and fucking you, it blocks the receptors a little bit. Not blocks them, it just kind of like covers them a little bit with like, just picture putting a screen over a hole. Shit can still get in there and you can still get high if you really want to, but I just don't, I don't want to, you know. I don't mind doing a little partying, but doing dope, doing heroin, fentanyl, pills, Anything that makes you fucking sick when you don't have it. Jesus Christ, what was I thinking? I'll go ahead and let these fucking people trap me into some fucking addiction where they're in control. And, you know, it's usually black people who are selling the drugs, at least on my way. And they just love it when a fucking white dude is having to call in back to back. Like, what the fuck? Where you at? They love that shit. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's comical to them. So I got, I got like an idea that I was thinking about doing kind of off what I just said, but it, I, I just thought about it. I was thinking, get a house and kind of like put, like you got cameras, you know, put cameras all over the house. Like they did a real world, except for we'll call it crack world or drug world or something like that. You know, you could almost take the studio and turn it into something, you know, four or five bedroom, little bedrooms and put 12 people in here. The drama that's going to unfold, just think about it. You take 12 of these motherfuckers. You, you do that at any of the hotels here, Don. <sighs> Have, say it again? You could do that at any of the hotels that are yeah. here in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Like, I, it's a great thing what they're doing for people. Thank you, State of California. Also, two days or yesterday went to the food stamp office gave me food stamps cash assistance and some medical in florida you don't get shit yeah. you can get food stamps for a month are drugs a serious charge in florida uh just, like, it, like here you just get they let you go it depends it really does yes you're you're going to jail if you get caught with residue of cocaine in a bag your ass is going to jail and you're going to have a felony mm. for residue. Now, 
chances are Judd will probably throw it out because there's not enough evidence. If you got any kind of lawyer at all, he's gonna, oh, well, we want to independent test it. Well, there's not gonna be anything left to test. No test, you gotta drop the case. So, yes and no, they're tough on it, but they're not at the same time. It's, it's weird, they pick and choose who they fuck with. I'm one of the ones that gets fucked with because of the gang shit. Uh, hell, I was on the front page of the Palm Beach Post. And the way they had it, it looks so crazy because they're so far off. They thought they had me at the top with another guy. The other guy's not even part of our group. And they were trying to say that him and I were the leaders of the Palm Beach and Broward chapters. And I just thought it was hilarious that they would say that because I don't live there. It's kind of irking me now. I'm like, what the fuck? If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Hmm. A lot, man. Primarily, though, I think I think I would really like focus on self-discipline and fucking doing right in elementary school, like listening and doing my work. But I was one of those people, and I'm still like this. You could run numbers past me, huge numbers, and I can just figure them up. Same thing with, uh, they'd be, I'd, hear them doing stuff in class, it'd lock in my brain. I might go and read a couple little things and then boom, I, I don't do any of the work though. I don't do homework, I don't do classwork, fuck yeah. that. You got a great memory. But I get 100 on every test. How far did you go in school? 10th grade, yeah. And that was only because uh, I went to that program. If I wouldn't have gone there, I probably would have I probably wouldn't have even gone to high school. I could have taken my GED when I was in sixth grade. Uh, so I got a little bit of college too. I did some college classes. Uh, I'm actually pretty fucking smart, which is the most disappointing part of it all. I'm well-spoken, smart as a fucking whip, and uh, mechanically inclined. I can draw. Uh, I wouldn't call myself an artist, but I can do tattoos. If you put a pattern on, I can do it. Uh, I've been doing that for about 20 years. So I got a lot of talents. I got a lot of fucked up shit, but I think it's about balanced out. You know, like I, I got a lot of good stuff and the couple bad things are real bad. So it's like, it, it's tipping the scales, but I'm working on it. What's your biggest fear now that you're out? What scares, what scares you the most? Hmm. My reactions. Your temper? It's, it's terrifying. How old are you? I'm 39. I'm born in July. I'm a cancer. And uh, if you think about it, crabs, right? That's the symbol for my sign. Crabs are real docile. They don't bother nobody. You know, they're kind of, they travel in packs or whatever, but they don't really talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how they communicate, but I'm just thinking they don't, right? So me, if I could walk around all day and not speak to people, I'd be okay with that. I'm not really, this is probably the most I talked in fucking five months. And I'm doing it because I'm hoping that somebody, whoever the hell is watching this stuff, will take it serious and like really listen to what the fuck me and all these other people that have been doing this are saying, because trust me, I'm not glorifying any of that shit. It was a waste of time, a waste of my life. And God knows how many people were affected by my, my, by my negativity. Uh, these are things that I got to live with now. And hopefully if you're young enough and you haven't made these mistakes, you can Fucking learn, just pay attention and do one thing I said. Fucking just one thing, don't join a gang. But that's, that's really not that, that's not that serious. Just fucking do good in school. 
I don't care if you fight every day after school. I don't care if you fucking smoke crack after school. Just do good in school. And you will go somewhere in life. I mean, they, the government wants you to, do, to be successful. Maybe not wholeheartedly, because they like to be in control. And the smarter you are, the more power you get with money, uh, the less control they have of you. So it's kind of like a... I won't go into conspiracy shit, though. That's... Mm -hmm. What would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Hmm. Always be observant. Pay attention. Pay attention. I used to tell. All right, so the Kings in Florida were probably the the largest gang in Florida. But we're, like I said, we're all over the world. And we all fall under the same umbrella versus a lot of other gangs. They have offshoots, you know, gangster disciples, black gangster disciples, Latin maniac disciples, blah, 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 a whole bunch of these fucking little sets. Well, uh, generally, give or, given whatever prison you're at, uh, there's something called having the keys to the yard, which means we're in charge of that compound nothing gets done unless it goes through us it's politics you know nothing gets done without going through the president unless it's some snake shit that they're and the same thing happens in there people do rogue shit and they get fucked up for it when they get caught killed even you know but uh i just think that All of these things that I'm saying, I'm just going to try to get to your next question because I don't want to keep rambling about it. I'm more of a direct to the point kind of guy, you know, and I want these fucking, hopefully it's kids who are going to watch this. And hopefully your parents don't care that I'm cussing because I do have a, I curse like a sailor. But, you know, perfect imperfections, I guess. Um, I'm well spoken, but I cuss a lot. <sighs> And I'm so frustrated, man, because I, I want to get high, bad as fuck. I fight it every goddamn day, man. One of these days, I'm going to lose that fight, man, if I can't get the fuck out of here. and just All I need is just, a, just like a little... You know how like when you're a little kid, your dad or your mom, they hold on to the bicycle seat and the handlebar and they push you for a little bit and you're pedaling? And the next thing you know, you're kind of like wobbling a little bit and then boom, you straighten out. You're free. But I just, I need that. I need somebody to help me get started. You know, like, it's fucking impossible. I thought I could do it on my own, man. It is fucking hard. It's damn near impossible. Being institutionalized, I'm used to these motherfuckers bringing me my food bringing me my commissary. I got a bed to sleep in, I got fans, no air condition. I didn't have air condition for 15 years, if you can imagine that in Florida. Uh, but, ah, man, I didn't think it was gonna affect me like this, talking about this shit, man. Keep, keep, keeping inside for a long time. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. I'd rather, I got all the time in the world, man. My schedule is non-existent, if you will. Until Monday. Monday I start work, 7 a.m. till, uh, 7 a.m. until 3.30. Uh, job site's in West Hollywood, so I got to go out there and see the freaks, mm -hmm. you know? I've actually been thinking about trying to get a place out there, but everything's so expensive here, I mean, it's, It'll fucking take me months to save up that much money. Even though I make really good money doing this job, I already know the expenses and I got money I gotta pay back. I'm trying to get my license. I haven't had a license since 2007. Hmm. And I never had a moving violation, ever. Wow. They great. took my license because of unpaid court calls. Hmm. So. All right, John, thank you so much for sharing your story. All right. Well, thank you. And I mean, I wish you lots of luck now that you're out.
Thank you. I, I'm, uh, I pray every day, man, that shit gets better because it's just been getting worse and worse every day. But it's, it's the fucking, uh, what's it called? Uh, sometimes right before it stops raining, it'll get real bad for a second, then it'll just stop. So hopefully I'm in that real bad and then it'll just stop and things will get better. I hope so. That's what I'm hoping for, you know? All right, man. Thank you. All right, thank you.